Uh, it is now time for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is from the Old Testament uh, and from the New Testament. Our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. The New Testament uh, the New Testament reading is from Revelation 4, verse 11, and it reads, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because you created what you please. It's okay. Our uh, scripture reading today is uh, found in Colossians chapter 1. And today we'll be reading verse 15. And it reads, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. You may be seen. So uh, this morning, as I was preparing for the message, I said, oh, I've got to change the title. So uh, this morning before, um, I didn't even know if Lincoln was up yet, I was like, I've got to change the title. Uh, so I changed one word. I, I, changed, I changed it from importance to preeminence, and, and you'll see why. Because I felt like, I felt like preeminence is a better word than importance. And so today we're looking at the word preeminence. And how it fits. Uh, today we're going to be, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, we are going to be in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, starting with verse 15. So, as we begin with all of our messages, uh, have you ever wondered, hmm, have you ever wondered, first of all, have you ever wondered why Jesus is so important to our beliefs as Christians? Have you ever wondered, where was Jesus during the creation of everything? Have you ever wondered why the Bible separates God into Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Where's Marcus? Marcus, this is Marcus. Speaking of Marcus, uh, I hope you wish someone a happy Veterans Day. Uh, are there any veterans in the room today? Anyone know a veteran? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who? Marcus. 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 Yeah, that's why I was so happy to have his name yesterday. Uh, my dad. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, isn't God just God? God just God. Uh, why don't my Catholic friends focus on Jesus uh, as much as my church or I? That, that's kind of an interesting question, and I'll tell you where that question comes from. And then, uh, since Jesus is the Son, doesn't that mean He has me? That He is less than the Father, right? Father, Son, is there a hierarchy? Right? And so that's what we want to talk about uh, today. Uh, before we get started with the outline, um, so this year I did something different at school. Um, so we had Club Rush, Club Rush, we always do, beginning of the year. All the clubs are out in the quad, and everyone is promoting the club to the new students. We have a lot of, we have like 200 <coughs> new freshmen every year. Which doesn't sound like a lot. <laughs> I mean, uh, most other schools, they have like 500, 700, almost the same size as our old school. But we have uh, 200. We, we will only fit 800 at our school now. And, uh, and so 200 new freshmen, they don't know what clubs there are, and so they're out there promoting the Christian club, Campus Life. And, and this year we did something different. We went out with uh, a survey. So some of my students and I were out canvassing the, uh, the student body and just asked them, do you believe in God? Simple question, do you believe in God? Right? And we just said God. We didn't say Jesus. And a lot of students said, yes, they believe in God, and then we had a follow-up question like, okay, so what religion, what religion do you follow? And we have a lot of Sikh students, we have a lot of Muslim students, uh, 
but a lot of our students are Catholic, Catholic students. So we have a lot of Catholic students, which was really good because we, I, I really didn't know how many students it was like a lot. And so I was like, wow. Uh, and so, and, and I noticed that some of the Catholic students, their families don't mind them coming to campus life or Christian club, but then there are some Catholic students who, whose families don't want them coming to our Christian club because we're Christian. And they think that Catholic and Christian are two separate things. And, and so uh, so I really kind of encourage them to still come and listen. But um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. But I once, always, whenever I have Catholic students come, it's always important for me to let them know the importance or the preeminence of Jesus. And so um, today is one of those messages that I uh, definitely go and help clarify with uh, our Catholic students uh, because they, I want them to understand uh, how important uh, Jesus is to all of us. And so before we begin, let me do this. Oh, sorry. Um, all right, so here's our outline for today. So we're going to start in verse 15 and end in verse 23. And so uh, we start off with Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God, which we just read. Uh, we're going to read Jesus' involvement in creation. We're going to read Jesus is first in everything. Uh, then Jesus reconciles everything to God. Jesus' reconciliation, reconciliation includes us. And then the last one is stand firm in your faith. So that's what we're going to be following. So before we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Mm-hmm. Father God in heaven, we come to you because you are the source of all truth. Father, we thank you for your word and for uh, Paul writing this uh, in the, his letter to the Galatians. And so, uh, Father, we pray that you will help us to um, help us to know why he wrote this and for us to understand the importance and the uh, significance of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will help us as we reflect on who Jesus is, that it will help us to focus uh, our attention on being more like him in our lives. Help us to put him on the throne of our hearts that we may follow him because of who he is. For he is God. And Father, we pray that you will help us never to forget uh, the preeminence of who Jesus is, not just in this world and in this universe, but in our lives as well. Help him be first, just as he is first in everything. We pray all this in Jesus' name. All right, let's dig into uh, Colossians. So Colossians verse 15, I read this already. Uh, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created, and he is supreme over all creation. It's interesting how uh, Paul includes this as chapter 1, right? Chapter 1, he has uh, greeted the uh, the church, right? In his letter, he has uh, greeted them, and... Uh, and, all, and right away, right away, he talks about the importance, the preeminence of Jesus. And so here he is reminding the church of the importance of who Jesus Christ is. Um, there was some heresy going around uh, in this church in Colossia, and uh, they were focusing a little too much on angels, angels. Uh, we had a student in my uh, youth group years ago, uh, Janet, who uh, always asked me about angels. Lots of questions about angels. Uh, you know, the little cute baby ones with wings. Um, there are no such things as little baby angels with wings. But they're cute. Um, but she was really involved and really curious about what's going on with angels. And they're not as significant. So, but the, the church in Colossae was uh, also having the same issue with angels. And so, uh, so Peter, uh, Paul wanted to make sure that uh, Jesus 
uh, is a place before anything else. And so this is where he gets into that. And I am sorry, this is my dear friend who is, uh, had a stroke and he calls me. Um, I don't think he has, knows that he's calling me. Um, I'll have to hold that. So uh, let's see, let's, say, let's break this apart. Christ is the visible image. And so when you think of the word image, you think of likeness, right? Likeness. That he is like the invisible God. But the word image here uh, in Greek has a deeper meaning. Uh, in Greek, it, it can mean likeness, but it can also mean manifestation. Uh, in this case, it means that Jesus is manifested into God, that he is the embodiment, not just like him, he is God, okay? He has become like the invisible God. Uh, God, the Father, and the Spirit are both spirits, right? Invisible. There, definitely there, but unseen. Not that their work is not unseen. I mean, we see his creation. We see what he's done in our lives. And yet, Jesus is a more physical manifestation, right? He is uh, God in flesh. And, and fully God, fully man at the same time. And because of that, we're able to hear God's words spoken through Jesus. And we see the actions of Jesus. Same thing that the Father is doing. Same thing that the Father has been doing. And will continue to do, but in a physical form in Jesus. He existed before anything was created. So therefore, meaning that he is not a created being like angels, right? He existed before anything was created, meaning that he was there in the beginning and is supreme over all creation. Now, this uh, this translation is New Living, New Living Translation. Um, most other versions of the Bible, looking at your version of the Bible, may say something different. It may say, he is the firstborn of all creation, firstborn. And a lot of times, uh, being that this is a newer, modern translation, we don't understand the significance of firstborn. That firstborn carries a, a lot of weight, uh, a lot of responsibility, because most of the inheritance of the firstborn goes to the firstborn. Most of the inheritance of the father of, uh, of the family goes to the firstborn. The inheritance, uh, the responsibility of taking care of the family goes to the firstborn. Uh, firstborn, first meaning not just in number, but also in significance. Okay? So, uh, firstborn of all creation uh, is Jesus. Okay? So, uh, visible image of God. Okay? Verse uh, 16. His involvement in creation. For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms on our earth. He made the things we can see and things we can't see, such, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before him, anything else, and he holds all creation. So we see here that not only is Jesus existing before everything, but he was involved in creation. He was there when everything was made. Everything we see and we don't see. Uh, so when we read such so things as kingdoms and, and thrones, rulers, everything that is in heaven, we don't see. Jesus created everything. He was there with God in creating everything. Everything was created through him and for him. So, again, the significance of Jesus is that he is not just, it wasn't just God. You know, a lot of times we just say God. And when we say God, it just covers everything. But we need to understand, and I, and I try to teach this to my students as well, is we need to say Jesus. We need to remember to say Jesus much more often than God. God, uh, a lot of students believe in God, but not all students believe in Jesus. And we need to make sure that we say Jesus' name much more often. 
Jesus is their new creation. Okay? And so, therefore, not just created through him, but also created for him. And not only that, in verse 17, he holds all things together. Through Jesus, he holds everything together. Not just creating it, but holding it together. Um, as a physics teacher, I'm always teaching physics in here, I'm sorry. But there's so much about science that reveals God's truth and his, his omniscience. And so when we understand the things that we can't see, including those things that are the laws of nature, those things are also being created and have been created by him. Invisible, but the laws of nature belong to Jesus. Jesus is the first in everything. Verse 18, he is also the head of the church, which is his body. So in this verse, verse 18, the head of the church. And, and we, when we think of the head of the church, we think of the leader of the church. And he is, right? This is his church. And, and, when, and all the decisions we make in this church as we move forward is through Jesus' uh, leadership, right? We follow his leadership as our shepherd, as our master, the Lord. But here the word head also has a different meaning. It also means source, uh, like the head of a river, like beginnings of a river. Right? The head of the river is the source that the river flows. So in this case, the head of the church is the source of life, blood, right? The living water of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning. Again, the word supreme, again, means firstborn. Supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. Right? And, and this is why I had to change the title. I had to change the title this morning because it wasn't just the importance of Jesus. It was the preeminence of Jesus. Preeminence meaning that he is first. First in everything. Right? And so, it's not that he takes second fiddle. He's not. He is there from the beginning. He is, creation is through him, and he holds everything together. He is the source and the head and the leader of the church, which is his body. He is the firstborn of the dead, first to die and rise again. And this is part of his inheritance that he then gives to us. So, verse 19. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Verse 19, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. I think in some versions of the Bible it says to dwell in Christ. That means all of God. Uh, the Greek word is pleroma. Uh, pleroma is, uh, means uh, fully. It also can be translated as basketful. But really it means everything. So for God in everything, he has given everything to Jesus. And for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. He gave Christ everything. Everything. Right? All authority. Everything that is God is in Jesus. Right? And through him, through Jesus, God reconciled everything to himself. God restores everything back that he made through Jesus. It's because of Jesus that when he is able to restore creation, he is also able to restore us. Right? Our relationship back to God has been restored through Jesus. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. 
because of Jesus' sacrifice, because the Lamb of God is so perfect that God's blood, Jesus' blood, was shed on this cross. It is by this blood that he has made peace with him, that he has restored his creation. Everything that Adam and Eve destroyed because of sin, Jesus, the second Adam, the second Adam, restores back to God. God, Jesus is the one who saves the creation, including us. So, the word reconcile here meaning to reunite and to restore. So, through Jesus, he has restored everything back to himself, everything back to God. And we are now at peace. And, and here, in verse, the next verse 21, this is where Paul brings it back to this church in Colossae. This includes you, who, once, who were once far away from God, you were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Paul has reminded the church who Jesus is. And now he says, this reconciliation is also for you and for us. Because we were all at one time sinners. At one time we were all enemies. We didn't know that there was a God who loves us, who died for us. And we thought we were doing the right thing. But in our right thinking, we made mistakes. In our right thinking, we served our own selfish desires. But here, God reconciled us back to himself. Verse 22, through the death of Christ. <clears throat> In his physical body, as a result of our renewed relationship with Jesus, we are brought into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless. As you stand before him without a single fault. And that is amazing and yet humbling at the same time. Because we know we are nowhere near perfect. And yet for us to be able to stand before Jesus. And before God as holy and blameless without a single fault that is not because of anything we've done it is all because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us and it's kind of an amazing thing it is in itself a miracle that he is able to see us as pure as holy blameless, without ever sinning, right? This is the word justify. And we see the word justify in the Bible, and yet we don't really understand that justify means like you never sinned ever. Justify meaning that you're not just innocent, but it's like you've never sinned. And that's how God sees us now, because of Jesus, because of what he's done on the cross. And that's why we never, ever forget. Right? That's why we have Lord's Supper every first Sunday of the month to remind ourselves of the great sacrifice that was paid for our renewed relationship with Jesus and with the Father. So what is our participation? What is our part in this? It's good to know but what do we do about it? Verse 23. But, and this is where Paul transitions, 
But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you first heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. So what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is believe this truth. This is faith. The meaning of faith. The meaning of faith is to believe and hope. Believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away. From the assurance, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. You're sealed for, by the Holy Spirit for eternal life when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master, as you continue to follow Him. But don't drift away from that assurance. Remember what it is that you believe. Hang on to it. Even though storms will come and pass in your life, Always stand firm in what you believe and don't drift away. God is faithful. So our responsibility, stand firm in what you believe. So let's summarize. Paul reminds us that Jesus existed long before he was born in a stable. That Jesus existed as God in heaven. God has placed all of himself into his son. So that Jesus is fully and completely God before creation of matter and time. So, and, and even Jesus says that. Like Jesus says, I am. And it's whenever Jesus says, I am in the Bible, he is equating himself with the Father. Because remember, God said to Moses, when Moses asked him, who should I say sent me? God in the burning bush said, tell them I am sent you. So Jesus already existed before God, uh, with God before creation. Jesus is an important part of the creation process. Uh, in Christ, God's loving words and actions are revealed to us. And Jesus is the only one to restore everything back to God's original plan because of his blood on the cross. So our response is that we must stand firm in our faith of who Jesus really is. So the message today is about Jesus' preeminence. And Paul reminds us of the importance of who Jesus is. Not just Lord and Savior, but also God. So, in our reflection today, let us say this to Jesus. Lord Jesus, you have inherited everything that you and your Father have made. Help me to recognize your Lordship over my life. As we uh, pray silently, uh, lift up a prayer to Jesus, recognizing him. As Savior in your life, and then I will close. So bow and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your perfection because of your willingness to come to earth and follow your Father. Help us to recognize you as God. That you are with God from the beginning. And that you are God. Everything belongs to you. Because you made everything. It pleased your Father. It pleased your Father. To give you everything. Because you are the perfect Son. We pray that you will help 
as remember your preeminence, your significance in our life. Because we live for you. Father, we pray that you will help us and remind us of who Jesus Christ is. Help us to always put him back on the throne of our hearts. That we will, will continue to follow him more closely. Knowing and reminding ourselves that he himself is God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.